CNBC TV 18 Weekender. Aditya, it's such a pleasure to have you. Even a New Year resolution nowadays has fitness on the top. Is the industry growing with that kind of, uh, you know, run up the way people are enthusiastic about? I think so. I think by and large Indians have increased their discretionary income and because of that now we're getting into more lifestyle diseases associated with people sitting, eating, eating unhealthy. Mm. So fitness is on the rise. It has been unorganized in India but over the last few years we see a drastic uptick in the number of foreign players and domestic players such as ourselves that are expanding. Mm. Growfitter does a fabulous job of aggregating them. But I think Indians need to become more conscious and aware of fitness. That's the only way we'll be a healthier nation in the next 10-15 years. Mm. You know, I was reading some data and the Indian spend on this sector is way lower than what we see in the other many countries. Uh, but even then, it's known as a sunrise sector. It has been growing at 28-30%. to 30%. Do you see that growth continue as we go ahead? I would be surprised if that growth number doesn't increase because, as I said, people are getting into lower back issues, hypertension, diabetes, cholesterol, you name it, we're getting into it. So, and to change that, we need to change our lifestyle. Uh, fitness, active lifestyles is not an inherent part of our culture. We prefer to go out for a movie or eat and uh, crash. We need to change that. If we're going to survive as a fit, healthy nation that's competing at an international level and be free of disease. So I think the number will go up. So has the spend really been coming in? What have been the revenues for you? And what is the kind of growth trajectory that you're looking at going forward from here? Sure. Despite... Uh, the demonetization, our industry as a whole has grown. I think we had one of our strongest years. The results are yet to come out. We've also gone into major acquisitions, both in Sri Lanka. We opened 20 gyms in Bangalore recently. We're looking at some other markets within India where we want to expand. Talking to international players about taking over some acquisitions that haven't yet been formalized, so I can't speak to them. But I think the industry is growing. I think we are poised to have a super year ahead. You know, how would you look at the Indian industry? Even as you have been there for many years now, it is still called fragmented. It perhaps is not structured so much. There are big and small gyms. There are various ways of working out. Do you see all of that coming under an umbrella? Do you see that happening? I don't see that happening in the immediate future because... Uh, Unfortunately, we have a culture of price sensitivity and people often think that we'll get something good for six, eight thousand rupees a year. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, you get what you pay for. So while there are many more expensive players out there in the market, people are yet to understand that service and good quality comes at a price. You and a good trainer will charge you a little extra, but make sure that you don't uh, injure a muscle or, you know, sitting in bed for a long, long time. Mm -hmm. Fragmentation will occur for another decade or so, but I think the biggest players and the cleanest players will rise to the top. Are there any tie-ups coming in with corporates as well? Because this is a very, very uh, with interest question that I'm asking. Of course, we actually work with corporates quite exhaustively. Uh, I won't name any because I don't know how they feel about being on, uh, on record. But uh, we actively participate with huge corporates all over India. We run on-campus clubs for them that are open only to their employees. We offer discounted programs to their members and employees, hmm. even their families. So we're trying to do our share in getting the word out that let's get together, let's get fit, and we'll give you a discount if you have a large number of employees. So what is Talwalka's business frame going forward from here? I mean, as you said, you are adding more. You're talking to international players as well. There are various startups coming into the business with newer apps, newer schemes, newer products as well. How are you keeping pace with all of that? Uh, we try to develop a lot of technology in-house. Mm. We're constantly evaluating how we interact with our members, what sort of member information we're collating, how we remind them to come back to the gym. Uh, as you know, we work with Growfitter very closely because I believe that a lot of people travel, a lot of people are on the move all the time. Sometimes their day finishes really late. So you have to give them a sense of well-being even in their own house, in a hotel room. So I think technology plays a large part in that. If you can take out a smartphone and get on an app that tells you what to work out, how to work out, maybe show you a video, how many reps and sets to do, it goes a long way in just keeping that lifestyle going. Mm -hmm. It's not just an urban phenomenon anymore, right? Correct. So how are you looking at the two-tier, three-tier cities going? Actually, a large part of our portfolio is in tier two and tier three cities. And you'd be surprised at the amount of time people have to go to the gym. You have to understand the lifestyle in Bombay is uh, you commute for four hours a day. Hmm. Whereas in a smaller tier two city like or tier three city like a Sangli or a Sholapur or one of those cities, your commute might be even five minutes. So you have four hours of productive time that people then can either go to the mall or go out with their family or go to a park or go to the gym. So we find that receptiveness is much higher in tier two and three cities. So, you know, I was reading somewhere on how the Indian uh, fitness industry stands at $2 billion as of now. The retail industry perhaps is at a 5,000 crores going to 7,000 crores in next year. Is that the kind of money that you see being made? 
easily easily with the supplements with clothing lines with everything under the sun possibly coming in india now there are people whose livelihood based on just importing protein supplements clothing active wear shoes so i think the retail industry is going to at least double in the next few years yeah so the sports industry for that matter i mean that so, also forms a part of this what is talwalkar is talwalkar looking at getting into all of that from eatables to wearables etc we have an excellent program called reduce which is uh, basically uh, you can eat all you want it's a pre portion control meal and it basically guarantees weight loss uh, out of 100 people i'm i'm assuming 95 to 98 people actually get results hmm. but i think these markets are huge now people are discovering options of staying healthy up apart from just working out correct i don't suggest it but uh, different strokes for different folks <laughs> one last word from you other than we let you go just give me a number on what is the industry stand at in sense of monies and where do you think it's headed overall india ah uh, i wouldn't know pan india because there are so many people who run cash based gyms mm, so it's difficult yeah. to formulate them like when you do a consensus uh, census in india mm. it's difficult to get every number because there are so many households I, where I, people I, are I not agree. reported yeah. similarly there's so much income coming into say restaurants gyms hotels bars that is difficult to tabulate but if i had to guess i'd say every 5 years the indian fitness industry 5 to 7 years should double in size oh wow that's yeah. putting in a lot of number aditya thank you so much for taking time Pleasure out for us and answering all our questions Pleasure thank you cnbc tv 18 weekender